I'm going to be talking about my PhD thesis work. So we're sort of transitioning now from talking about brines um, in the last few talks to now moving on to salts, and specifically salts in Gale Crater that have been measured by the MSL Curiosity rover. Um, so from orbit, aqueous minerals have been mapped extensively on Mars. Here I'm showing the distribution as of 2014, where phyllosilicates clay minerals are found um, throughout the altered Noachian crustal materials, the oldest materials. And salts are also found, but more scattered in distribution. But they provide us important clues uh, to the aqueous chemistry of past waters. And they can also uh, give us more information about potential transitions and environmental uh, conditions, such as potentially a global transition to more arid climate on Mars, uh, which can be sort of studied through these salts and also can be studied specifically at the landing site of MSL Curiosity, which is Gale Crater. Gale Crater is a 150 kilometer diameter crater located at the crustal hemispheric uh, dichotomy boundary. It's a pretty deep crater. This is a topographic map, which you're looking at here. And you can see what makes it sort of unique compared to the other craters in the surrounding area is it has this large mound in the center. That's Mount Sharp, which is a sedimentary sequence at the center of the crater, which has been mapped extensively from orbit. So zooming into that white box there, um, work by Freeman et al. and others has shown the um, from the base of the mound, where we this is where we sort of started uh, MSL's traverse, to uh, the top of the mound on the bottom right, we transition from clay mat rich materials to sulfate rich materials. Again, potentially sort of capturing that um, transition to a more arid climate. And this can be uh, studied in depth, um, in situ, and put together into a stratigraphy. So here, this is Freeman et al.'s um, strat column showing a transition from the lowest layers, the Murray Formation, these clay-rich uh, materials, to more sulfate-rich materials, which we haven't yet reached with the rover. Curiosity, like I said, started down here on the floor of Gale Crater, and it's currently in that clay bearing unit, which I have uh, noted. So some of Curiosity's initial findings when it got to Gale is um, these beautiful fine-grained rocks in the Yellowknife Bay area, which record information on a long-lived ancient lake and preserve evidence for an environment suited to support a Martian biosphere founded on chemolithoautotrophy. Another paper by a separate Gratzinger et al. paper um, began to study the Mount Sharp sedimentary sequence. We first encountered it here at the Pahrump Hills, a uh, member of the Murray Formation, where these fine, finely laminated rocks were observed, which were consistent with uh, deposition in a subaqueous lake. And so here, uh, the MSL team began putting together a strat column, and so you're going to be seeing many strat columns in this presentation, so to orient you with them, um, this is showing elevation and showing all the mapped units within Mount Sharp. So this was our MSL team strat column as of 2015, and Curiosity is now here. So we've uh, made it a long way and collected many more observations since 2015. Our stratigraphy has expanded dramatically as we've continued to climb up Mount Sharp and explore more layers, and we've gained thousands and thousands more observations. And some of the um, information we've gained from the last few years is we found new evidence for potential um, oscillations in the lake level that are recorded in this Murray Formation. So this includes some heterolithic sedimentary textures, desiccation cracks, uh, varying clay chemistries, and borate salts. But one of the challenges that we face, uh, one of the best ways to study uh, paleo environment is by looking at the mineralogy. The challenge here is you might observe these black dots on the strat column, they indicate where MSL actually drilled and so got a measurement of mineralogy. You might notice that there's a big gap here, and that was when the drill of the rover wasn't working. 
Um, but there's still lots of interesting cha environmental changes potentially being recorded in these uh, rocks, and there's still a lot to be studied with this, uh, within this area. So we need to use another tool to understand these transitions. And the tool that I used for my PhD thesis is an instrument on board Curiosity called ChemCam. ChemCam is a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy instrument, so it performs LIBS, um, and it's very valuable for studying salts because it provides a very large data set. Every day, Curiosity measures a few rocks with ChemCam, totaling to over 20,000 individual locations measured on the surface to date. It provides very fine-scale elemental geochemistry uh, measurements. So each individual lib spot's our chemistry measurement is only 350 to 550 microns in diameter. And volatile elements, which allow us to measure and quantify salts, have weak but detectable emission lines with ChemCam. So the objective of my work has been to map the presence of salts in Gale Crater using the ChemCam instrument. So previously, uh, salts have been observed in a few different uh, morphologies, the first being, uh, and most common, being these calcium sulfate-filled veins, or these fractures. We also see magnesium sulfates enriched in some of these dendrites, um, nodules and ridges of salts and clays, and also fluorine-enriched materials. My co-author and collaborator, uh, William Rapon, has worked extensively on studying salts in Gale Crater as well, and one of his focuses has been studying calcium sulfates within the bedrock. So in addition to those veins that I showed you on the last slide, we've also seen bedrock material enriched in calcium sulfate, likely indicating um, poor filling cements present within these bedrock. So here again, I'm showing the strat column with all the different members of the Murray Formation, and red is where William has mapped um, calcium sulfate enriched bedrock, such as these two targets shown here. William's also been focusing on another type of sulfate, magnesium sulfates, within Gale Crater. Specifically, ChemCam was able to detect magnesium sulfates in the red targets shown on this slide, so Beach Cliff and Norwood Cove which correspond to more rubbly, dark materials. So there's some thought and some evidence that these may be primary magnesium sulfate salts. My focus, on the other hand, uh, oh, and then one more slide. Uh, so this is a sort of summary of William's work, where we're looking at the strat column and then the locations of the calcium sulfates and the locations right here of the magnesium sulfate salts. And you can see that the magnesium sulfates in particular are restricted in their stratigraphic um, position. So they only occur pretty much in the Sutton Island and Blunt's Point members. Um, so indicating a brief transition to a potentially different, uh, more saline-rich fluids. So my focus has actually been the chloride salts uh, within Gale Crater. So we've observed a bunch of different morphologies within the Murray Formation, three of them being uh, bedrock. This is just a classic Murray Formation bedrock target, these nodule-rich bedrock targets, and then also veins. And we've actually managed to detect um, chlorine in isolated observation points of these targets. So where you see the red circles on the bottom um, is where chlorine is detected within the ChemCam observation, just as um, a chlorine peak within our spectra and one individual observation point of the ChemCam uh, measurement. So indicating that we're sort of observing these isolated sporadic enrichments potentially of chloride salts. So here again we're looking at our MSL strat column along with in the center um, the APXS measurements of chlorine. You can see um, APXS, which is another chemistry instrument aboard Curiosity, observes pretty much constant chlorine throughout uh, the stratigraphy, not much variation. On the other hand, ChemCam, shown on the right plot here, which is my work, you can see uh, there's a lot of variation in chlorine, and specifically a lot of enrichments up here in these Sutton Island and Blunt's Point members of the Murray Formation. 
Um, this is likely due to the very difference in observation scale of the two instruments, where ChemCam, like I said, is observing these really fine points, so we're likely targeting individual chlorine-rich grains or uh, pore-filling cements. APXS is averaging chemistry over a much larger area and might not be sensitive to these small-scale enrichments. Another interesting observation about these targets that um, are chlorine-rich are that they're also sodium-rich. So you can see that there's a pretty clear correlation between sodium and chlorine, which indicates to us that this is likely a sodium chloride salt. Thank you. So we also have some supporting evidence that the phase we're observing is halite. Uh, specifically, the Chemin instrument, that mineralogy instrument I mentioned to you earlier, has measured halite within the Kayla drill site, which is indicated by the orange star. And the SAM instrument, also um, from Archer et al. work, showed that there was a transition from uh, perchlorate-rich materials to chloride-rich materials as we transitioned up to where the orange dots are within the Murray Formation. So to wrap this all together into a potential emplacement scenario, um, we think the sort of combined evidence of the sulfate salts and the chloride salts, um, that these were first um, deposited potentially uh, via evaporation of lake waters um, as the Murray Formation was deposited. Um, but later on, sulfate-rich groundwaters uh, were prevalent, and we think there may have been multiple sulfate-rich groundwater events, which mostly uh, to completely dissolved the halite, which is a very um, mobile phase, um, and redeposited uh, the halite as individual grains and uh, potentially cements within the bedrock, explaining sort of its sporadic um, occurrence throughout the Murray Formation. Uh, for more information on this, see my uh, GRL paper, uh, soon to be out. So uh, just to wrap this talk up and give you some conclusions, uh, MSL has identified a variety of salts within Gale Crater, including calcium sulfates, magnesium sulfates, borates, and chlorides. Uh, these salts can help us uh, get a better understanding of the ancient lake and groundwater environments present at Gale, and they also record fluctuating water levels of the lake and also potentially increased um, salinity in certain periods, specifically where we saw those Sutton Island and Blunt's Point members of the Murray Formation, where there was an enrichment and more magnesium sulfates and chlorides present. Um, more studies, though, are needed to understand how this might impact our understanding of uh, Gale's habitability. So how does uh, varying or alternating saline and fresh waters affect microbial communities? And also, how viable are these uh, for our search for life since they've been so impacted by later groundwater diagenesis? And that's about all I have. Thank you. Jen has a question. I'm going to take chair's prerogative. Um, how do you know that the chlorine you're seeing from LIBS is chloride and not perchlorate? That's a great question. Um, so that's where we're relying on evidence from other instruments as well. Um, so the SAM instrument, some recent work by Archer et al. has given us more confidence that this is likely chloride. We also have some evidence from ChemCam which points to the fact that this is of chloride rather than perchlorate, which is the fact that we do measure oxygen, although the oxygen could be from a variety of phases within the rock and also due to atmospheric breakdown. So, uh, but there's no clear correlation with oxygen for these targets. So we have some evidence there as well. Thanks. Yeah, to stay on time, we're gonna move on.